Alrighty, so we have Eon Kutalaba versus Dustin Jacoby. Dustin Jacoby is the uh, late notice replacement for Devin Clark. I think this fight is much more appealing for the fans, should be a much better fight than the Devin Clark one. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So Justin Jacoby, he is a little bit, well, he's, his frame is a little bit uh, larger than Kutalaba. He's got a 2-inch height advantage and a 3-inch reach advantage. Kutalaba isn't the biggest 205-er, uh, but, you know, he does have that physicality that kind of equals it out a little bit. And Kutalaba is on a little bit of a losing streak. He's lost the last three of his last four fights. So, you know, never a good look if you lose four or five. But he is a fan favorite, so I'm, I'm guessing they're not in any rush to cut him. But, you know, it, it might be weighing on his mind a little bit. Uh, so for Justin Jacoby, he comes from that kickboxing background. He frequently looks to switch stance. He has a really nice kicking game. When he's an orthodox, he mostly looks for that low calf kick if the opponent's also an orthodox. When he's in southpaw, or when the opponent is southpaw, when they're in opposing stances, so it's southpaw versus orthodox or orthodox versus southpaw, uh, he looks for the teeps to the body or the body kicks. For Kudalaba, he's a guy that likes to get in your face, really put the forward pressure on you. He uses a lot of footwork on the outside to disguise his striking entries. When he does close the distance, he'll look for mostly just like one twos, straight rights, two threes, three twos, a lot of uh, a lot of power shots. And Jacoby can keep his head on a center line quite a bit. He also has his hands low the majority of the time, and that can be dangerous because he throws those naked kicks a lot, those naked, those non set up leg kicks, those non set up body kicks. And while he's doing that, his hands are low and his head's on the center line. So, you know, I could absolutely see Kudalaba catching him with uh, one of his power shots in in that fashion. So it will be interesting. I don't think this fight plays out in the feet, like mostly plays out in the feet. Uh, it could, you know, get into the clinch a little bit. Kudalaba's got a nice frame off elbow in the clinch. Both are pretty good in the clinch. Jacoby used a lot of knees to the body in the clinch. Uh, he did well in the clinch against uh, Grisham, where I thought he would have a little bit of trouble. But, yeah, he, was, he, he looked strong in the clinch in that fight. For Kudalaba, he can go to the well too many times. Like, what I mean by that is that he can get a little predictable with his striking entries. He goes for the 1-2. He'll go to that, like, three times in a row. <laughs> or he'll go for, like, a spinning back fist, like, three times in a row. Uh, you know, he just can get a little predictable in the feet. doesn't have the most vast arsenal of techniques that he uses in his stand-up but but I guess Jacoby has only if he like obviously he has a lot of techniques that he can use but mostly he just goes to his main weapons which are the low calf kick or the jab or the body kick in southpaw all right so in the grappling for this one so Kudalaba he will look to catch a kick and look to ground the opponent get get them on their back he does have good or well, heavy ground and pound like he will posture up throw heavy elbows heavy punches but, you know, he doesn't have the greatest top control because he's mostly looking for damage and he can get a little sloppy on top. He can overextend and he just gets a little crazy on top. P like, pure wrestling-wise, uh, I don't think Kudalaba's takedowns are very good. Like, when he goes for the double legs or, you know, those two additional type takedowns. I think his double leg shot, he shoots from too far away. He doesn't set it up. Just poor technique in general for his takedowns. Looks to muscle a lot of his takedowns through instead of, you know, using technique. Uh, yeah, but when, you know, if his takedown gets reversed or he gets put on his back, he's pretty much a fish out of water. Like, he's pretty useless off his back, honestly. But I don't think, I don't think, um, Jacoby is really going to exploit that. Alright, so how these guys win fights. So for Jacoby, it's the leg kicks here. It's really nice leg kicks. Good all round kicking game. For Kudalaba, he, is very aggressive, which is, you know, if everything's equal, aggressiveness is one of the criteria that helps you win fights, according to the judges. But also, you know, it can intimidate opponents and get them on the back foot, and that's just not a good look anyway. So yeah, he is aggressive, he will get in your face, and he does have good chin. I think Anchor Live just caught him, and he was just kind of taken by surprise by the speed of Anchor Live. I think speed really killed Kudalaba there. I don't think he has a bad chin per se or or it's cracking or anything like that. I think Ankle Live's just uh 
he's very fast, but also he has a bit of power himself. So how do these guys lose fights? So for Kudalaba, he has one and a half rounds of good cardio, and I think I'm being generous there. After that, he starts winging his punches. Just he has very poor pacing in general. Paces himself poorly, goes balls out in the first round. Has nothing left in the tank pretty much in the second and third. For Jacoby, he can slow a little bit too in high pace fights in the third round. I think he has the cardio advantage here, but it is something to watch out for going forward. And Kudalaba, he has those, you know, grappling tendencies that we talked about before. Jacoby not going to exploit that here, so we won't worry about that. And also for Kudalaba, you know, it's when you take it to him, when you hit him back, when you hit him good, he will start to back up and he will, you know, I don't think he deals with adversity very well, in my opinion. Alright, so pass to victory for these two. So for Jacoby, look to faint a lot. Kudalaba was biting on the feints of Ankle Live and that really slowed down the volume and the pressure of Kudalaba. Also the low calf kicks. Kudalaba is moving around a lot on the outside, so it might be hard to time those low calf kicks. But also you can switch to Southpaw, look for the body kicks, the high kicks. Ankle Live caught him with a high kick. Khalil Roundtree hit him with a few good body kicks before he turned into a wrestler. So yeah. And they were both southpaws, and they had success with that technique. For Kudalaba, look to bring the heavy forward pressure, as you normally would. Look to get in the boxing range, put your hands on him, pretty much. Jacoby isn't much of a boxer. He doesn't... He tends to like to keep it at kickboxing range and pick you apart from the outside. He does have decent hands, but I'd probably say Kudalaba would win the boxing exchanges. Alright, so... In the clinch as well, where I believe a bit of this fight will play out. So if Kudalaba gets in the clinch, I think he'll be looking for elbows in the clinch. Same with Jacoby, and he'll also be mixing in knees to the body. I think it's pretty even in the clinch, honestly. In the clinch, though, uh, Kudalaba can mix in takedowns, which Jacoby doesn't really look to do. So he can mix it in like that, look to change the rhythm of the fight, or look to just catch a kick, get one of the leg kicks or one of the body kicks of Jacoby. Because he doesn't generally throw many high kicks, so, you know, I'd imagine he will if he gets the read, but you can look to reach for a couple of those low kicks and then look to get him to the mat because we haven't really seen him off his back. Well, I haven't seen him off his back in a while. Since he came back from kickboxing, he hasn't been on his back, so yeah, look to put him on his back. He might have zero get-ups and then, you know, look for some top control and then some damage. How I see the fight going, I think Kudalaba, you know, when he versus technical strikers, he seems to have a little bit of trouble. You know, last time we saw him against a technical striker, he got put out by Ankalaev. I'm not saying Jacoby's on the same level as Ankalaev. I don't think, I think Ankalaev's a much better striker than Jacoby. But, you know, Jacoby is one of the best strikers that Kudalaba has faced in his career. Kudalaba also looked pretty uncomfortable against Roundtree on the feet. I think, I think, you know, Kudalaba will want to wrestle a little bit here, just to mix it in at least. Uh, but I do think Grisham is a little bit of, is a better wrestler and a much bigger guy than Jacoby. I mean, than Kudalaba, and he couldn't get Jacoby down. So, I don't see Kudalaba having too much success with his wrestling, unless he capitalizes on a slip or something like that and gets top control like that. Kudalaba has shown a solid chin in the past. He seems like the kind of guy that prides himself on his durability and his, you know, ability to get in your face and, you know, absorb a shot. So, that was the first time he's been knocked out in his career. I'm interested to see his energy in the lead up to this fight and also, you know, early on in this fight because he does seem to be a little bit of a confidence fighter. Like, I mean, a guy who whose game relies on how confident he is feeling because when you do hit him good, you can see the confidence drain out of him and he starts backing up and he's, you know, it's... it's Yeah, so I think he's a bit of a confidence fighter. Interesting to see how his confidence and his... Uh, yeah, see how he shows up on fight night. And also the just the pre-fight antics, if they're all still there as well, like getting in your face at the weigh-in and all that, I'll be interested to see, because if he isn't getting in his in Jacoby's face at the weigh-ins, I think that'll be a big red flag, because that's generally what he does. And if he's not doing that, then I think, he's, I think there is something behind that. But I imagine him to do that anyway. So yeah, I'm interested to see how he shows up on fight night. I do think Kudalaba wins the first round of this fight quite frequently. However, you know, whenever Kudalaba faces adversity, he kind of folds, so I wouldn't be confident in this guy. If he takes a few leg kicks, I think he's going to start feeling it sooner or later. 
I think Jacoby will land a few leg kicks, uh, absolutely, because he is very good at those leg kicks. So I don't trust Kudalaba's uh, mental game to to be able to take those leg kicks. I think he's going to kind of crumble under the leg kicks if Jacoby does get them off quite early. Because if he took the same leg kicks that uh, Grisham did, I don't think he has the mental fortitude of Maxim Grisham. And I don't think he would continue to fight forward. I think he'd, he'd ser- it would seriously affect Kudalaba. But yeah. So most of the fight, I think it should be on the feet. I do think Jacoby is the better striker, you know, on paper. And he does have the better gas tank. So I am favoring Jacoby. But, you know, Kudalaba can... He probably was the first round quite a bit. Could make it ugly in the second round. Seems like he's been training Extreme Couture for this camp. So I think that's a good move because his... He does have a bit of talent, and he has a lot of physicality, but I think he's... Well, he needs to refine his game a little bit. I bet pre-tape on Jacoby. I'm less confident now, just based on Jacoby's last performance when I watched it back, but I still believe he should be the favorite in this one. I think he wins probably like 29-28. I think he takes rounds two and three, or gets a late TKO on Kudalaba. Right, so as you can see, it's a pick at the moment. I do believe Jacoby should be the slight favorite. I'm just going to bet small on Jacoby because I do think this is a semi-decent style matchup for Kudalaba, actually. But he's just he's just so poor technically, and Jacoby is the better striker. I don't think he's going to get him down. And Jacoby did struggle again in his last fight, so I'm not I'm not super high on Jacoby winning. But I, yeah, I do think he should win this one. Other bets I was considering were Kudalaba in round one because you know he. Out of his 15 wins, 13 of his wins have come in round one. And Jacoby is sort of a slow starter, so he could catch him cold. Uh, what price I'm looking for that is around $4.50 or around plus 350 But another bet that I was looking at was the just ended round one prop, because a lot of Kudalaba's losses do come in round one as well. So over 75% of Kudalaba's fights ended the first round. And I'm hoping for around $3.50 or plus two fifty plus 250 for the end in the round one prop so yeah that's what i'm looking at but yeah i do think jacoby should be a slight favorite 